Hello. I'd like to present a little spreadsheet simulation of a predator-prey um, interaction. Um, many years ago, uh, scientists by the name of Latka and Volterra presented models that uh, involved oscillating chemical reactions. But um, it was also shown that these, uh, this simple model, very simple model, can uh, model predator-prey interactions. It is known that very often predator-prey uh, show oscillating behavior in their population versus time. Here we have something I got off the web. It shows the uh, population of the, the snowshoe rabbit and the Canada lynx, which are predator and prey. And you can see there's an oscillation and the uh, population of one goes up and following that the population of the pr predator goes up and back and forth. Well, I'd like to show you this model, um, this Lotkin model, that um, simulates that kind of behavior. I do want to emphasize here that it's a very simplified model, and the actual predator-prey interaction is much more complicated. But this simple model can be simulated on a spreadsheet and can give you oscillations and leads to some understanding of uh, predator-prey interactions and why they oscillate. So uh, in this model, we start out with the uh, rabbits eating grass. And let's imagine that the grass is not ever limited. It never depletes. So th 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 there's always enough grass for the rabbits. And the rabbits eat the grass, and then they multiply. And uh, one rabbit becomes two. And the rate constant for this process is k1. And then the rabbit and the wolf interact. And the rabbit is eaten by the wolf. And one wolf becomes two wolves. The rate constant for that is k2. The wolf eventually dies. Uh, the rate constant for that is K3. So if we assume that the grass is not limiting anything, the change in the concentration or change in the population of the rabbits versus time is equal to a positive term here. In the first step, rabbits are increasing. It's equal to K1 times the number of rabbits. And in the second step, the rabbits are being destroyed. So it's, there's a minus k2 times the number of rabbits times the number of wolves. And in a similar way, the change in the const, uh, population of the wolves versus time is equal to uh, the uh, generation step. In the first, second step, the wolves are being increased. k2 times the number of rabbits times the number of wolves minus the depletion. In the third step, minus k3 times the number of wolves. So now let's, uh, let's go to our spreadsheet, and I'll show you how easily you can simulate this. You can uh, solve these equations and, uh, and get a relationship between the rabbit population and the uh, wolf population versus time. So we've got our three rate constants listed here. The first step that generates rabbits, the second step that generates a wolf, and the third step that depletes the wolves. And by the way, in the second step, rabbits are being depleted and wolves are being generated. So we'll start out with 100 rabbits and 25 wolves. And let's look at our second uh, month here. This is time and months. Uh, the number of rabbits after one month will be equal to this formula here that I put in already. It's the number that we started with, B8, plus the rate constant for the first step, which produces rabbits, times the number of rabbits. That's those two there, minus the rate constant for the wolves eating the rabbits times the number of wolves times the number of rabbits, all right? And we can do the same thing for the wolves. We've got the uh, wolves will equal what it was previously plus the change, the rate constant for the second step, which uh, produces wolves uh, times the number of rabbits times the number of wolves minus the rate constant for the third step times the number of wolves. And we can just take these formulas and copy them down. And uh, this is what we get on a graph. Let me get this out of the way and bring the graph over. And here we have our graph. And here's the rabbit population. It first increases. But as it increases, the more wolves uh, eat rabbits and generate more wolves. And that, of course, causes the rabbit population to decrease, which subsequently causes the wolf population to decrease. And you could play little games with this. If we want to change uh, the rate at which uh, rabbits are, are born, we can uh, change it from 0.02 to 0.03. And you can see that it uh, increases everything. 
but it doesn't affect just the rabbits, it affects the wolves, as you might imagine. So you can do nice little simulations. Um, now you might ask the question, well, is there any situation where there would not be this oscillation? Well, if we look at the uh, equation for the rate of change of rabbits and wolves, if we set those rates equal to zero, as we do down here, if the change in rabbit population with time is set equal to zero, um, we can cancel out the rabbits and we get this relationship that k1 equals k2 times the wolves. And the um, equation for the wolves, equal, set that equal to zero, we get k2 times the rabbits equals k3. And I've set it up so that I can easily make this change on the spreadsheet, but uh, you, you, you can uh, verify it. So I'm going to uh, just... I just have to really change the wolf population to 40, and it makes those two equations that I just mentioned hold. And you can see when I do that, the rabbit population stays constant at 100, and the wolf stays constant at 40. So uh, <clears throat> this is a nice little um, spreadsheet simulation that can be done uh, in um, a short time, and it illustrates how predator-prey populations oscillate over time, or it, it models it. And again, I do emphasize that the model is not perfectly compatible with uh, what actually happens in nature, but it is a model that leads to oscillations. So I thank you for your time, and I'll see you next time.